Hi, my name is Akila, and I'm here with. I'm Avery. I'm Andrew. And we are the A Team. Today, the A Team is going to be taking on media literacy. We're going to be talking about remakes and sequels and how we're feeling about them. Let's get started. So, you go kick us off. Okay. Um, with the first question, we have. We want to answer this question and see which films do we want to binge to like get ourselves ready for new and up and coming remakes. I guess you can go first, Avery, if you want to. Um, this one's not necessarily a remake, but uh, recently for, what was it, Halloween Ends, I watched the original one, Halloween 2018, and then Halloween Kills all back to back, um, like right before going to the theaters to the point where I was on a time crunch and I had it blaring while I was showering and playing in the car on the way to the theater. I was not driving to clarify. <laughs> um, Safety first. Yes. Um, that's one that comes to mind recently. Uh, definitely making a tradition out of watching all the Scream movies back to back in like preparation for the new sequel. But as they keep adding up, it becomes more and more of a task. Now it's like <laughs> six movies back to back. <laughs> more dedication. <laughs> that's, yeah, there's a lot of dedication. Um, yeah, that's what I could think of, like, recently for me. How about... Yeah, um, I would say I definitely want to rewatch the the original Beetlejuice because I feel like now that they're trying to remake or do a sequel to the Beetle to the movie, I feel like I need to, like, refresh myself, you know, so... That's really cool. I think I'm gonna um, definitely gonna rewatch the Barbie movie, the OG Barbie movie with Tyra Banks before I go see Barbie on Friday. I didn't um, know that there was an original Barbie. Movie. <laughs> yeah, the OG Barbie. Yes. Well, it's called Life Sized, but it's with mm. Tyra Banks and I think, don't quote me, Lindsay Lohan, <laughs> um, and Tyra Banks is a Barbie that comes to life. It's it's a great movie, great film. So I'm gonna watch that before I go and watch the Barbie, Barbie Harmer. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm seeing it Monday, so definitely let me know your thoughts next week. Yes, of course, we can do a little chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna watch it, so. <laughs> Why not? I just wanna like live vicariously through y'all. <laughs> That's fair, okay. You seeing Oppenheimer? <sighs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing both back to back. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're a truly true Barbieheimer then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're... the second question is, um, what is the second question? Do you have any brand loyalties, mm. like when it comes to movies? <sighs> brand loyalties. So here's my thing. I love movies, but I don't know anything, which might be problematic, about the actual studios that produce them. So I can name three movies, and I wouldn't know if Paramount, <laughs> Disney, may, I, can, I can name a Disney movie, or whoever else made them. So I don't think I have a brand loyalty to any production studio necessarily, but um, I do love Disney. Like, I mean, how can you not like Disney? I feel like... They kind of have like a little conglomerate in our brains or something <laughs> because <laughs> I don't think you can kind of experience this life without at least knowing of or a reference to some Disney movie. Some property you can't. Avoid yeah, in you your can't lifetime. avoid it. So, like a true, I don't think I can show the Apple girly um, um, <laughs> brand stuff. Um, <laughs> but like a true Apple girly, I'm also a Disney girly. So Walt yeah. Disney would be proud. Yes. <laughs> And Walt Disney, we trust. <laughs> what about you guys? Um, my only brand loyalty, I guess, coming up, I watched a lot of Cartoon Network. Love 
So, yeah, and my family is like a Disney, Disney family. Like, my oldest sister worked at Disney, so yeah, we we consumed a lot of <laughs> Disney content. <laughs> Not by choice, but <laughs> you know, um, you just got to do what the family does. So, yeah. But Cartoon Network is my my one and only love. Yeah. Favorite show from Cartoon Network? Dexter's Laboratory. Uh, a yeah. solid choice. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, for me, I don't have like brands and like specific. Watch me some of the. When I say like Paramount, would that be a studio? Yeah, okay. production studio, yeah. Um, I don't have like a favorite studio or, okay, that's kind of a lie. Um, <laughs> we'll get back to that. Um, I don't necessarily have a favorite studio. Um, I have some directors that I'll like follow their projects um, and definitely excited for, for example, uh, Robert Eggers, the guy who made uh, the Witch, The Lighthouse, and most recently, The Northman. Um, yeah, that looked intense. <laughs> I wanted to watch The Northman, maybe I will now. I would highly recommend it. Um, or like certain horror IPs. Um, the one studio that pretty much any movie with their like brand slapped onto it, I'll be intrigued by, is uh, A24, absolutely. <laughs> um, mm. But yeah, you're a hard guy, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't cool. see these shades. He'll look like he hard body. <laughs> Be for real. <laughs> yeah. No, the shades just give me like Ray vibes. Like, but, hello. <laughs> Excuse me, Ray. Ray Charles. I know who you're talking about. I just wanted to know if sure you know who you were talking about. <laughs> that is so insane. That man is blind. Please. <laughs> it gives me too cool for school more than anything. Okay, you know, I'll, like... I'll stop talking about your shades. <laughs> <laughs> like the movies. <laughs> um, Avery, you have some questions for us? <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. Um, first, what do you think makes a sequel or remake, like, worth existing, I guess, <laughs> to be one? I feel like... That definitely is like a very good question. And I think it's like a few things. I feel like the social impact is probably like the highest on that list though, because even in the case of like, again, the original Scream movie or even the original Lion King, how there was a societal impact that happened like when those movies dropped. Some type of curve, some type of, I don't know the word, but little divot <laughs> into how like we interact with each other or just social norms in general. Um, so I feel like that definitely tops that. Like the, the sequel should be as impactful or should hope to be as impactful as the original film. I will also say that the cast definitely plays a part in it because their chemistry obviously makes the movie. <laughs> so. I would hope that if they don't recast the same people, that they would be able to recast people that have a oh, yeah. similar or as inviting, pro you know, propelling energy. Um, I feel like those are the main two, though. Like, how is it going to impact us? Because that's why the movie's being released. So if you feel like you have a good enough script, you know, <laughs> um, and good enough actors, and you feel like it's going to be shifting culturally, you might you might be onto something. No. Okay. How about you? Yeah, that I feel like it's a really good question, um, especially because some of these remakes coming out, and I'd be like, "Who asked for this?" But like, <laughs> that's real. <laughs> <coughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> that's a, that's a good example. But um, yeah, I feel like most of the time, the audience that's like digesting the remakes are like die-hard fans and like they would definitely like become part of the box office numbers I don't know if like I myself would be one of those people but um because most of the time I feel like remakes just like drum up the energy of the past 
and like which is not a bad thing but it's just you know i'm always looking for like the new like what's what's new about this remake like what what is new like about this movie that's going to be different than the last movie so yeah uh, i don't know if that's the answer okay but um uh, what about you avery um <clears throat> for me uh, i'm gonna use like scream the 2022 uh sequel and scream six as examples um very vaguely so if anyone hasn't seen it it doesn't matter um <laughs> Uh, I feel like if it, like, ups the ante, switch things up, keeps it engaging, um, and it's, like, not repeating. <laughs> Basically, like, if it shows they, like, to be blunt, gave a damn about making the movie and not just about making money, yes. you know, like, um... Or just, like, making the same movie again? In yeah. a different font. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, uh... If anyone here has seen Scream 6, yeah. you know what I mean. That definitely ups the ante and changes things. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think one movie I could definitely uplift is, like, The Mask. <laughs> if y'all seen that one? Yeah. Like, the Jim Carrey one? Yeah, like, that one, the original, perfect. Like, beautiful. The Mask 2... <laughs> Mrs. I don't know Mark. what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Like, why? Like, don't even... Yeah, but... Yeah. There are definitely some sequels that we just don't talk about. I, <laughs> I, I, I feel that way about, like, maybe y'all haven't seen this, <laughs> but Mean Girls. The, imagine, the original Mean Girls with Lindsay Lohan was, like, <laughs> really good. Like, that was, like, a solid movie, and then the second one came out, and it was kind of what you were saying. They tried to remake the same movie in a different font, and it just right. didn't work because... It, it's like a one-hit wonder, you know, like you, if it hits, then it hits, but if it doesn't, then you kind of just get lost right. in the shine of the <laughs> other one. <laughs> yeah. Lost in the sauce. Basically. I will say one more thing I would want to, like, I want to add on before getting to the second question is, um, <clears throat> how do I phrase this? <laughs> how do you phrase <laughs> Um... This is kind of being the same thing, but also not. Um, for example, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like Netflix sequel, if anyone's seen that. Um, like Netflix produced it? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know why that exists, and uh, all the characters are very unlikable. But like, TLDR, it's basically like these teens come into this like abandoned town where Leatherface used to live to literally, like, gentrify it and buy it out. <laughs> and that's the plot. They all die. Um, <laughs> it's no. a horror movie. No spoilers, okay. but it's a horror movie. Um, but, uh, yeah, just the way they do it um, makes it so the characters are very unlikable. And also, I'm all for having, like, messages in movies if they're done right mm. but for whatever reason this one has like i won't get into detail just um but it has a message <laughs> that tries to like cram down your throat that goes nowhere really besides um plot convenience let's just say oh. <laughs> i can i can definitely understand that because i feel like some sequels are just there to make like statements more so than it is to like continue the craft of what the movie was initially about mm. or like again like the nuance that it might have brought but they're just trying to <laughs> make a statement that doesn't really go with <laughs> what the <laughs> film is but they know that they can they can milk it because they have a fan base, like you were kind of saying, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like timing, too, right? Because, like, if the fan base is, like, 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 getting older, there might not be much, like, will for a new remake, and then mm -hmm. someone will remake the movie, and it's just like, no, <laughs> we didn't ask for this. <laughs> but I don't know. Or it could be the exact opposite, where, like, fans are starved for a new sequel, like, 
my God, someone make a new Friday the 13th, I'm begging you. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no. <laughs> Solve the legal issues, please. <laughs> You had another question for us? Yeah. Um, I'm torn between. Okay. How soon is. How many questions you have on? <laughs> um, <laughs> Not too much. Just, the, just <laughs> this one, but I have three. Um, but uh, how soon is too soon to mm. remake, um, like, to remake a movie? Um, for example, this isn't like necessarily movie related, but um, there was a game called The Last of Us Part Two, which released in 2020, and <sighs> allegedly they're already let's get into it. Not uh, <laughs> re- about it. <laughs> not remaking it, but uh, you have feelings about it. I have feelings. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we would be here for probably well me, two hours minimum. Let me if just I say this: about it. anytime they do the adaptation from like video games to like live action movies, I just feel like it it goes wrong. Like every time. Like I just don't It's a curse. <laughs> like even when they do like adaptations, when they did the I mean this is not like the same, but when they did like the live action bleach adaptation. I didn't like that. I was like no I did not like that. No. <laughs> I was not a fan. No, and then they came out with the the last season of Bleach, which I was just like, yes. We need that, but the live action, no. Like, I didn't watch it. I like. I think I put it on, and in the first twenty minutes, I was like, "Turn it off. Just, <laughs> just turn it off." It wasn't doing anything. Mm-mm. Mm. But, um, I mean, what do you what do you think? I mean, I can't like attest to The Last of Us. I don't know if it's the same as the show, The Last of Us. Um, I like that show, but oh, um, uh, one thing, can I finish what I was saying about that? Um, by the way. Um, so yeah, what made me think of this question in the first place was, um, they made The Last of Us Part Two, uh, the game, not the show, um, and allegedly, um, a composer leak, they're already not remaking, but remastering the game, and it's been, like, under three years since it came out, mm. um, and it's like, I don't feel like that needs to exist personally, and uh, that's what kind of made me start thinking about this. So what are your thoughts on that with media? Yeah, because you were initially asking about like how, how soon is too soon. Yeah, yeah. how soon is too um, soon. I feel like it depends, because I think that the same thing happened like with the Avatar movies. The blue people, not the airbender. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank um, you for the clarification. Yeah, I had to make sure. <laughs> I had to make sure. Um, because I think that after they made the second one, whatever, in the water. Um, wave. Wave water. of the water. Wave of the water, yeah. Um, they said that they were already working on the third one. But I feel like the difference, or like the time frame between the first Avatar and this one was like almost 10 years. So yeah. them confirming that they're making a second one doesn't mean that we're going to get it immediately. And I think also because of how long it was, I'm not saying people expect a, a faster turnaround, but I think they wouldn't be upset with one <laughs> <laughs> because of how long it took. I feel like the same thing can be said for like albums and like music when artists withhold music for like years. It's just like, okay, we might've got a single, we might've got a feature, but like, where, where's the meat? <laughs> where's, we need the, the good stuff. The market has demands. Yeah, we do. <laughs> the people have demands. So, um, but I don't know. I think that, I think it does depend on how long it takes to like produce the new thing and when it's actually gonna come out, legal issues maybe. <laughs> um, but also, there has to be, I feel like a year at least before anything is confirmed or denied, like kind of maybe needs to happen mm. because you have to let it simmer. You have to let what you just produced like settle into the public and see how people feel, how it ages. Mm. Because what somebody might want right after the movie might not be what they want a year later. People's, you know, needs change. That's my um. spill. <laughs> cool. What do you think? I don't know. I just feel like things get produced faster and faster nowadays. So I definitely feel what you're saying. Like, we want 
like a faster turnaround. Sometimes. Like, sometimes I myself would like a faster turnaround. I feel like that just depends on like the production team mm -hmm. and like who's doing it. And like, is the production team fans of the property that they're working on? Which, you know, it depends. So, yeah. What about you, Avery? <clears throat> um, I feel like it's a double-edged sword um, to use like Marvel, for example. Um, they're coming out with a new movie like which one? What, every month or something? Which one? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Which one? Along with like a new show. Um, but, uh, and like full disclosure, I've not really kept up with stuff since Endgame besides uh, Spider-Man and the recent Guardians of the Galaxy, but um, it's just because it's like too much. They have like mm -hmm. six shows <laughs> who knows how many movies you have to watch three of the shows minimum to <laughs> understand like two of the characters in one of the recent movies I think that they're releasing <laughs> that just sounds like bad writing to me it should be like understandable <laughs> yeah um but also at the same time like let's say Scream I'm so excited for Scream 7 whenever it comes out um uh but also Take your time. Don't rush it. Make sure it's a good uh, product. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. film, whatever. Yeah. I feel like that's all like, our collective concern is like, make Quality. sure it's a good product. Mm -hmm. If you're going to remake it, make sure, make sure it's, it's good. Then right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. That's real. I guess, like, along the lines of how impactful these films are to us, enough for us to care. I mean, at the very least, um, I have a question for you guys about how these films have maybe made you look at yourself or life differently in any way, whether it be the original film or the prequel, um, maybe all of the movies as a whole, <laughs> just like anything that you've pulled from them that you may use, not even in your day-to-day, -day, but just overall. Um, I've definitely pulled like <coughs> multiple quotes from the movies that I've watched. Nothing's coming to mind right now, but um, like, I mean, I feel like it's it's inspiring to like see someone deliver a line, and it's like, wow, that just hit like. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say that school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Same know? energy, yeah. <laughs> like I don't know, but which I think. I mean, it doesn't have to be a line necessarily, even or either, but just more so a theme. Like, I mean, we can. I don't know if I can say this, but we can talk about like the theme of Marvel and military propaganda. <laughs> so like the themes in the movie, you know, and. You may not look at Spider-Man and see military propaganda, <laughs> but you may just see somebody inspiring, you know? And we all know, like, little kids, oh, I have an aspiration to be a superhero, but, like, you as an adult, you know, as somebody that is maybe less imaginative and more cognizant, <laughs> how do you, you know, um, interpret those themes and if they affect you at all or if you take any of them at all? Avery? <laughs> <laughs> Her turn. <laughs> um, My brain is blanking help. <laughs> I mean, I just, I would say that like every movie that I watch, I aspire to watch again just to see something different in it. Like the second time or like the third time around. I don't know. I try to watch the background characters and like see if I could like pick out like little details here and there. I don't know if I'm like, I would take that with me in like real life because it's a movie, but I don't know, yeah. For me, it's a bit harder to think of stuff because, so I'm mainly a horror fan, fan and- uh, Take these horror movies. Yeah, I'm not really trying to take uh, the messages from Scream and apply those to my real life, um, <laughs> you know. That's real, That's yeah. Like, um, <laughs> uh, 
I don't know how to describe it. Just sometimes, like, a really good movie just has an impact on me, which, like, I can't describe, but just... It just sticks with you, you know? Mm. I definitely feel like I have, like, um, childhood movies that, like, have stuck with me. Um, One of them, which is, like, what kind of inspired me to do anything related to, like, visual art is Crooklyn. It's a Spike Lee film. And... Every message that I got from that film, like as a little, as like a little person, um, <laughs> still is so present today. Um, I think just because it was like a really wholesome movie, though, you know, kind of sad, but it was a wholesome movie. So thinking about that, thinking about how um, this character was like the first character that I seen that was like anywhere parallel to my actual life, which I think is kind of what you were saying about it just being a movie, but. Art imitates life, you know, mm-hmm. or whichever way you want to put it. <laughs> um, so seeing actual things that are not, maybe not superhero or like bloody murder, but <laughs> seeing like some aspect of real life in a movie, knowing that it's a movie is like, wow. Like maybe this just made me think about things a little bit differently. Also just perpetually have the line from Heathers in my head. Real life sucks losers dry. If you want to fuck with the Eagles, you got to learn to fly. Like that stays in my head incessantly. <laughs> so that's, you know, the tidbit that I pulled from a movie. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that's what I think about. Cool. I guess my other question is still along the same lines. Um, but how has your perception of like enjoying a movie when you were younger changed from when you were older? Like, um, I guess my <laughs> thinking about like Pocahontas as a as a child and like how in- enjoyable it was versus <laughs> enjoying it now. Like how has mm. your perception changed? Um I, this question is is very good cuz I just watched one of my favorite movies that I haven't watched in a long time called Kung Fu Hustle. (laughs) I recommend it. It's very funny. But, um, yeah, watching that movie made me realize that, like, when I was younger, I was too obsessed into, like, martial arts. (laughs) Like, in a very, like, comical way, like, (laughs) If you learn martial arts, you it's like solve your world problems. Like you know, all your issues will go away. And like, um, I think now since seeing it like recently, I think that yeah, I don't know where my mind was, but you know that was like how many years ago? And like, yeah, I don't think it was like very impactful to me other than being a good laugh, because you know, I, I love a good laugh. It was, it's a comedy, and like, I feel like comedies definitely are like hold a special place in my heart, because they translate so many ideas and like principles at the same time. So, yeah, I mean, it just reaffirmed like those principles in my, my mind, but like, yeah, Kung Fu Hustle, I, I recommend it. That's your movie? Um, I couldn't really name, like, one in specific, but in general, um, I find it's either one of two paths, either one filled with nostalgia, maybe you get emotional, you have a good time, the other route, you sit back and you're like, why the hell was I allowed to watch this as a kid? (laughs) Um, Yes. An example of anyone seen this, uh, Ace Ventura Pet Detective. If you haven't seen it in recent time, my God, rewatch it. It's aged horrifically. <laughs> um, and I should not have seen it when I did. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, uh, yeah. Also, I did think of a movie that recently had an impact on me, Across the Spider-Verse. Across, it was a very good movie. I feel like, um, I don't know if I have like a specific movie. Crickland is just an all time favorite, but Mm. um, actually speaking of Mean Girls earlier, watching Mean Girls now (laughs) versus watching it when I was 12 (laughs) 
is interesting to say the least. <laughs> um, I feel like, like, like you were saying, Andrew, sometimes when we're children, like we have this idea that like if we anchor into this one thing or do this one thing that it's gonna change everything. Right. And I feel like as adults, there's just a nuance in that, that like you can do one thing and it change a lot of things, but it might not be learning Kung Fu. <laughs> and it right. might not be wearing the right clothes or mm -hmm. speaking the right way, whatever it is. Saying the right things. Sa exactly, <laughs> doing the right things. <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel like, like you were saying, every like, it's like, oh, it's nostalgia. I know all the words. I love every song. And then it's like, hold on. Like, why was I allowed to like <laughs> let these things or these themes or these mm. ideas like roam free in my brain um, at such a tender age? Right. So that's going to be it for our show. How did you, how you guys feel? How y'all feeling? I'm good. I'm ready to go watch a movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You, you might have ate that one thing. <laughs> <laughs> what movie? Which one? Uh, you should watch Barbie. Barney? No, no. Barbie. <laughs> you should watch Barbie. Yeah, yeah, go to the theater right after this. <laughs> Come no. watch Barbie with us. Uh, I can't. <laughs> I can't watch that movie. I'm sorry. Um, well, <laughs> um, Andrew won't be watching Barbie. Nope. Um, Avery is a... Barbie Heimer, <laughs> and I'll be watching Barbie. <laughs> we'll give you a review when we see you next <laughs> week. <laughs> this is the A Team. I'm Akila. I'm Avery. I'm Andrew. And this was our dig into media literacy. Hope you guys enjoyed it.